Hey, everybody, welcome to our Job Nimbus 101 workshop today. We're so excited to have you with us. Now, over the last few weeks, we've been going over a bunch of new features that have been added to Job Nimbus that I think are pretty darn cool and can help some of our customers. Today, we're going to be talking about an old feature that's often overlooked and I think can also help some of our customers, and that is work orders. Now, we're going to be talking about work orders over the next three weeks. Today, we'll be going over just getting the setup done. And next week, we'll be going over actually building out the work orders. And the following week, we'll give you some tips and tricks. My name's Logan. And I'm Dan. And are you a company that doesn't just do roofing? Are you a company that does multiple different trades, such as roofing, siding, windows, gutters, fencing, concrete, and what have you? Well, then we have a feature for you. And that feature is work orders. It slices, it dices, it separates all your different trades. It helps you keep track of all of them. It allows you to send those work orders to, your, to the subcontractors that you work with and even assign them to those subcontractors that you work with. Using work orders, you can keep track of a, all your different trades on a board, even if you're doing them at the same time. And today we're going to be showing you how that works. So let's get into it. All right. So the first thing we need to do if we want to use work orders is we have to turn the feature on. Now, if we're going to do that, the first thing we have to do is we have to come to our settings, click on your picture or initials in the upper right, choose settings. And then we're going to have to come over here to features. Here we are in features. And here is work order. So we're just going to turn this on. And then we have a few things that we need to do before we can start using our work orders. The first thing we have to do is we have to make sure we have a good template in place for our work orders. So we're going to come up here to templates. And let's check and see what we've got as far as work order templates to start with. Here we go. We've got two right here at the bottom. Let's take a look at the generic one. So here, like with many of our financials, you're allowed to choose what information is shown to the customer, what information is shown internally. If you'd like some more information on these columns, feel free to check out our videos on financials. Now, in this case, internally, we can see the name, description, quantity, and sales rep info on our work orders. The customer will only see the name and description. We could also turn on the cost, price, and unit of measurement. Down below, we have these gray boxes, which we can click into to add more information. However, I'm pretty happy with my work order template the way it is now. So with our work order templates verified, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check into some of these new tabs that have shown up on the left-hand side. And the first one being work order workflows right here. So here, we'll see all of the workflows that we already have set up for our various work order types. Now, you'll remember that contact types are things like residential customers, commercial customers, insurance companies, subcontractors, suppliers, Colts, and so forth. Now we've got here instead our different work order types. So these are the trades that we're doing on the house. For example, we can do roofing and siding on the same location at the same time without getting in each other's way too much. So these are great potential candidates for different trades to use in our work orders. Now, I actually have a new trade that I'm adding to my business, and so we're going to add a new workflow for it, and I'm very excited to introduce this to my customers. It's Starship Repair. Now, this is a, a fairly exclusive category, but uh, I, I understand Mr. Bezos might be interested. Something else important I can do is I can choose an image. I've got the perfect one right here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clone a workflow because generally if I've got an existing workflow, it's easier to clone it first and then modify it once I actually get it. So here we are. Here's what we've got. And all of these do apply to my Starship Repair. Uh, permitting is important in the Starship Repair process, mainly just for all the hazardous and radioactive materials. We are going to add one more thing here, and that is test flight. So how do you know if you fixed it if you haven't flown it? I'm not going to add this to my other workflows. Test flights are not required for those. I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it uh, 
after in progress before completed. There we go. Now we have our Starship repair workflow done. We have verified our templates. Now let's get out of the settings and into the main system to start working on what we see on the front end. Exactly. So work orders and the way that you move them through your workflow is with a board, just like your contacts and your jobs. Now, if you're using jobs, we suggest that you create your work orders in your jobs and create a work order board on your jobs board to track all your different trades. But as you see, we do not have jobs enabled, so we are going to be looking at contacts. So go ahead and go to either your contacts, or your jobs, and you'll notice a, that we have a work orders board here, but let's a, we're going to talk about that in a second. To create a new work order board, click on the gray box and change the type from contacts or jobs to work orders. This will tell Job Nimbus to pull the information from the work orders that you've created in your files, in either your contact or job files. So now that uh, we've gone over that, let's actually take a look at that work order board that we have. So let's go in here and edit it. As you see, it's a work order type, so we're good so far. Uh, this title, I don't really like that title because it doesn't tell me what I need to know. So we're going to update the title and choose work order type from the drop down here. We're also going to put a dash there. So it says work order type and then parent display. So it'll say like roofing or a, and then the display name, or it'll say Starship Repair, Jeff Bezos. So we know exactly who it's for <laughs> and we know what the work order type is. Since we have the work order type up there, we don't need the type down here and we don't really need the status. Since we already know, we're going to know what status it's in, because of what list it's going to be in. So instead, I want the phone number. That way, if there's any problems with the Starship repair, I can call Jeff up and let him know. So let's, uh, as, as you see here, our lists aren't complete. We're, we're missing some statuses here. So let's click on add list and we're going to add in a permit status. We're gonna save that. And then we're going to add in a test flight status. And this one, since we only have one workflow type with a test flight, we're going to add that in right there. Let's save it. And let's drag permit where it's supposed to be and test flight where it's supposed to be. There we go. Let's save our board. Okay. Let's go in and take a look at it. So as you see, we have permit here. We have test flight over here. Uh, the board works the same way as any other board. To move a work order through it, just click and drag. Now, as you see over here, let's kind of pull it over a bit more if it will actually load. But you see how a, this one is blacked out? That's because this Chuck Morris's uh, work order is a roofing job. It is not Starship. And so therefore it doesn't have that status. I cannot drop it into the test flight list, but we just got the permit for Chuck's roof. So we're going to drop it in the permit. We can also uh, filter this. We can filter it by location type. And as you see, we're already in, filtered by roof and starship. Maybe that's because that's what Logan is in charge of. Uh, we can filter it by assignee or subcontractor. Now these filters are just per user. So my filters that I have on this account does not affect the other team members filters that they have on theirs. And that's, that's really nice. So I can see exactly what I need to see and they can see what they need to see. But right now I don't need to see just roofing and Starship repair. So let's actually click off this filter. So we see everything. And there you go. We can see all of our different work order types. So we hope that this helps you get started with using work orders. As Logan said, next week, we're going to be going more in depth on how to create work orders and how to how they function in your job Nimbus account. So until next time.